All right, Bible chapter 19 of Job talks about this. Job replies, "My redeemer lives." It says, and "Then Job answered and said, How long will you torment me and break me in pieces with words?" And he's saying, he's, he's telling his friends, you know, how how long are you going to how long are you going to continue attack attacking me? You know, because he because he's you know, um, stand up for the Lord. And his friends are always criticizing him for that, and he's, and he's saying, you know, you know, how dare you continue, continue, you know, attacking me for standing up, for being up for the Lord. These ten times you have cast reproach upon me, are you not ashamed to wrong me? And even if it is, uh, this is an even if it is to be true that I have erred or you know made a mistake, my error remains with myself. He's like saying, you know, it's none of your business. You know uh, what mistakes I made. It's just between him and God. If indeed you magnify yourselves against me, or you know, or, or you know, out of hatred, and, and make my disgrace an argument against me, know then that God has put me in the wrong and closed His net about me. I mean, God, you know, since like God is just you know, of course, predestined all this to happen, because at the end of Job. God, you know, pretty much gets the glory, of course, of, of everything that has happened. And also, you know, Job um, is restored with everything also. So God gets the glory out of everything everything that happens because he's the one that has predestined everything to happen for a reason. To, mainly because of, so that he can get the glory. You know, and if you're a child of God, it's for your benefit. It's for your good. But if you're not a child of God, if you're not saved, then, you know, the wrath of God is over you because you don't repent of your sins and come to Christ for salvation. Um, it says, let's see here. It says, Behold, I cry out in violence, but I am not answered. I call for help, but there is no justice. He has walled up my way so that I cannot pass. And he, and he has set a darkness upon my path. Yes, God, God can lead you down. Um, well, it says right here, you know, it says, uh, he has walked, or he has walled up my way so that I cannot pass. He has set darkness upon my path. So God can allow evil to come upon you. You know, God can allow that, um, especially if you're a child of God who's in sin. He can't allow evil, evil to come upon you so that you can be, so you can wake up and come back to Him. So God allows the things to happen for a reason. He has stripped from me my glory. So you know, Job, Job was like Job was a very prideful person, and God crushed our pride and humbled Job. See that in a, in a Job, because um, Job repents of that. He has stripped me from my glory and taken the crown from my head. He breaks me down on every side. I am gone, and my hope he has he pulled up like a tree. He has kindled his wrath against me and counts me as his adversary or enemy. God does count people as as, as his enemy, um, especially if you're fearing sin and you're not repenting. God considers you an enemy. Not way that changes. Only, only you will, you know, uh, receive the love of God is if God saves you and you repent of your sins and, and, and look for Him. Otherwise, if you don't do that, the wrath of God will be over you. So basically, if you want God to love you and protect you, repent of your sins, get saved. You know, first of all, you know, God to save you and then repent of your sins and live for Him. He will love you. If you don't do that, then, then He will hate you and His wrath will be over you. Um, it says, uh, his troops come on to come on together, and they cast up their siege ramp against me, and I camp around my tent. He has put my brothers far from me, and those who knew me are holy and strange for me. Um, read that again. It says that he or he has put my brothers far from me, and th and those who knew me are holy and strange for me, meaning that um they don't want to be around you because. Because they know that Job is a holy man who loves the Lord, and um, those who hate God and continue in sin hate those people because they see that they are God. They see that they are trying to live a righteous life for God, but those who are not saved they hate Christians because because um, uh, you know they see how you're supposed to live for God, but yet they hate that because they love their sin more. And they love God. So yeah, if you're, if you're safe, if you're truly safe, if you're, if you're truly safe Christian, if you're truly living for Christ, people will absolutely hate you to death. They see, they see the love of God in you. They see that you're repenting of your sins. 
The world hates that because the world loves sin more than it loves God. People will come against you. People will, will attack you for that. But you've got to stand up for God's word. You've got to stand up for the Lord every single time. Um, moving on, it says, uh, My relatives, even his family, have failed. It says, My relatives have failed me. And his own relatives have turned turn, turn, turn against him. His own family has turned against him. And it, Jesus says in, in the Gospels, you know, um, that will happen also. I mean, if Christians, so we say Christians, even your own family will have nothing to do with you. Especially if your family's in sin, they will have nothing to do with you. Um, your friends, you know, I mean, it's just amazing because when you're saved, you know, and when you're truly living for God, those who are not saved will hate you because they see God in you. It's, it's, they see the love of God in you. And uh, they see that you're trying to live your life for the Lord. The world's in sin, so the world will hate you because they see that you're truly living for God, and then they will hate you for that because they're full of sin. Because they love their sin more than they love God, and, and of course, uh, people will will attack you for the for for uh, living for God. So, um, so always live for God, and always repent of your sins, no matter what happens. You stand on, you stand on the Word of God, and you I mean forever you stand on the Word of God. You always you know. You always stand. You always stand for, for the word of God. Always repent of your sins. Um, moving on from that, it says, uh, it says, my relatives have failed me, so his own family has failed him because of him living for the for God. My close friends have forgotten me. You know, I kind of feel like you know, I kind of feel that way also with with Job. You know, my close friends have forgotten me. I feel like you know, um, and just, just to be honest here, I mean. I don't hardly hear from any of my friends no more. I don't know why, but they, I just don't. Um, haven't done nothing to them for them to be that way towards me. But I hardly ever hear from anybody no more. Um, but anyway, you know, I kind of feel I kind of I can't I can't relate to how he to what he's talking about. He says my relatives, um, my relatives have, have failed me. He says his own family has has left him because he's been living for the Lord. My close friends have forgotten me. Of course, his uh, his his friends have left him because he's serving the Lord. And um, I, and I can relate here in verse 14 because I feel like sometimes my friends, don't, not you know, the people that I grew up with, man, I don't, I don't I never hear from anymore. Cause I feel like maybe you know I'm serving God, and they just don't want. To, I don't know. This is this weird, but I, I can I can relate to to what he's saying. Um, but I mean I don't care if people don't want to be my friends. That's fine. I mean I ain't gonna hate them, you know. I mean, I haven't done nothing to them. They don't be that way towards me, but they don't, they don't, they don't want me because I'm serving the Lord and doing what's right. That's fine with me. I mean, I ain't asking them to be my friend. I'm just gonna serve God and do what's right. If people don't like that, then that's them. They, they, they have to deal with God on that on Judgment Day. But I don't, I don't have done nothing hateful to anybody. But I mean, there's people that don't like me because I'm serving the Word of God. Because I'm serving God and I'm doing what's right. I'm trying to tell, trying to tell others about Christ. People don't like that. People say, you know, I'm, I'm being judgmental on all, all this crap. No, actually, Jesus says in uh, John 7, 24, to judge the right judgment. Um, but people understand that I love y'all enough to tell the truth of God's word. And hopefully God will save you and you will let you repent of your sins and, and live, for, live for God. That's what it's all about. That's why I make these videos is to tell people the truth about God's word. So, they can, so that God can save them through the Holy Spirit. They can be led to repent of their sins and live for Christ. That's what it's all about. It's all about what God. It's all about what God does. You know, not about what I do. What God does. God just uses me to, to to preach the word of God, so that people can understand it correctly, and and be you know you know be convicted of their sins. The Holy Spirit be led to repent and live for Christ. That's what it's all about. It's about God, not me, but but God. Yeah, I can relate to what what uh Job's saying. You know about he says right here um. My close friends have forgotten me, and that's how I feel about my friends. I feel like you know none, none of them, want, none of them don't want to have nothing to do with me. I don't know why I have no nothing to do with them to for them to be that way. But um, if it's because I'm serving in God, I'm doing and I'm doing that's right. Man, if I'm doing what's right, you know that's them. You know, I'm gonna serve God no matter what. No matter how many friends I lose, no matter what, I'm gonna serve God. I'm gonna stand on His word. Yeah, I don't care what people think. Never have, never will. All thing I care about is what God thinks. So that's it. Um, it says in verse fifteen, 
the guests of my house and my maid servants count me as a stranger. So the guest so that the guest in in his house and even his servants you know, want nothing to do with him. I have become a foreigner in their eyes. I called my servant, but he gives me no answer. I must plead with him with my mouth for mercy. My breath is strange to my wife. So even his wife has left him also because they am serving God. Remember his wife said, when all, when all this stuff was ha started happening to Job, his wife said, um, you know, curse God. And Job's like, no. And he goes, I'm not going to do that. He goes, God's in control. I love the Lord. I know he's testing me, but I'm not going to curse him. You know, so even his wife loved him because he was serving God. And to be honest with you, that's why you know, some marriages end that way. You know, um, um, a wife or a husband will leave the spouse because, you know, if, um, I'm trying to say this right. Um, let's just say, for instance, you know, two people are married, and of course, a man and a woman, and um won't get saved and starts living for God, starts repenting of their sin. The other one doesn't like it. The other one, you know, leaves. And that, 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 that does happen sometimes. Um, it's not on the fault. It's not on the fault of the person who got saved. I mean, that's not their. I mean, God saved them. It's on the fault of the person that left. And if they go and marry someone else, they're committing adultery. Um, um, but you know, that happens sometimes. Also, I'm um, trying to think of other instances. Um, you know, also talking about marriage, um, later on in the Bible, in the Gospels, Jesus, I believe it was Jesus that, that said, um, you know, if, you know, don't, if, if you're on yoke, don't get married, you know, if, meaning that if, if one person is a Christian, other person is an atheist or whatever, is not even saved, don't get married, because all it's going to do is get some correct tension, and whenever you have uh, kids, it's really going to create a mess because they don't know what you know. They don't know what to do. Um, they don't know what path to go. But you know, if you're a Christian, don't get married to someone who's, who's an atheist or who's a Muslim or whatever. Don't do that. If you're if you're a true Christian, then you, then you marry someone who, who's also a true Christian also. So don't don't get involved with someone who's not truly saved. Don't get involved. So all all, all that's going to do is create a mess, especially when you have kids. It's really going to create a mess then. Um. Let's see. Because my breath is strange to my wife, and I am a stench to the children of my own mother. So, the, so of course, his mother is, has well, wants nothing to do with him either. Because I am a stench to the children of my own mother. Um, so it sounds like, uh, of course, his brothers and sisters wants nothing to do with him. And I said, well, you know, his whole family didn't want nothing to do with him. Um, his mother, I mean. You know, he's, he's serving God, and all they all love him. His family, his his friends. I mean, they just well, you know, want nothing, want nothing to do with him. I mean, even his workers. You know, it's just well, but it happens there. It says even young children despise me or hate me. When I arise, they talk against me. All my intimate friends abhor me or hate me, and those whom I loved have turned against me. No, I know, I know, I know how he feels. My bones stick to my skin and to my flesh. I Meaning, you know, he's gotten really sick. He's like, you know, bone skinny. And I have escaped by the skin of my teeth. Have mercy on me, have mercy on me, O oh, you, my friends, for the hand of God has touched me. Why do you, like God, pursue me? Um, let's, let's go to verse 22 again. Yeah. Why do you, like God, pursue me? God pursues after us. If he is predestined us to be saved, he chases after us until he grabs us and brings him to us. Um, you know, like a loving father. Um, you know, um, of course, like I said, God pursues those he is predestined to save the elect. He will pursue after you. He will, he will chase you down and grab a hold of you and bring you back to him. And he will bring, bring you to him. That's through the Holy Spirit, through the conviction of sins, through repentance, and through uh, living, living for Christ. Um, just, like, like I said, just, like a little, just like a loving father. If a child is doing wrong or you know whatever whatever his child's doing, a loving father is going to chase after them, discipline them, so they can stop doing what they're doing and come back to the loving father and, and you know and uh, do what's right. 
That's what God does to his children. He chases after them. Especially if God sends his child in sin, he will chase after them, discipline them. I mean, allow something bad happens to them so they can wake up, you know, repent or sin and come back to, to God. So God is, God is discipline. That's very true. Um, why are you not satisfied with my flesh? Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book, right here in the Bible. Oh, that with an iron, pen, and lead, they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer, who is Jesus Christ, lives, and at the last he will stand up. He will stand upon the earth. That's some some you know end times. Verse 25, the answer is, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. When he returns, Jesus will stand upon the earth. And um, he would judge the earth. Well, when he comes back, he would totally destroy uh, this current world. I mean, it's going to be just wiped out because of sin. And, I mean, God's got you know, Jesus, Jesus, who is God, has gotten so angry at this world for continuing in sin, not repenting. And coming to him, and he will come back, not as a little baby, but as a mighty warrior who's coming to destroy this filthy world. And he will come to destroy these filthy, wicked, evil people off the face of this earth. He will open up the lake of fire and he will throw them all in. Um, along with Satan himself, you know, uh, the demons, the Antichrist, false prophet, all that, will all be drawn in the lake of fire. And those that he has saved will live with him on the perfect earth for all eternity. Because when he returns, he, rec he recreates everything back to where it was before sin, sin entered into the you know, creation. So it will be a perfect world without sin when he returns. Um, let's see here. It is, um, and after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall uh, see God, um, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold and not another. My heart faints within me. If you say, How will we pursue him? And the root of the matter is found in him. Be afraid of the sword, for wrath brings the punishment of the sword, that you may know there is a judgment. Indeed, God does have a judgment. We see that you, 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 know, you see that when you die, um, you will stand under it. You will, you know, you will be judged, of course. And if you weren't saved, then you will be thrown to like into, 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 the, into hell. That is his judgment. Um, of course, you know he also judges Christians. I mean, he, you know, if you're in sin, and you're not repenting. If you're truly saved, then he will allow something bad happen to you. You wake up and come back to him. So, so God, of course, judges the unsaved and also the desaved. So, so important repentance sins. Well, if you're not saved, that's what's important. That's what's important to uh, you ask God to save you. When he, and if He does save you, and He will commit you through, He will commit you to the Holy Spirit. He will commit you of your sins. He will lead you away from your sins, and you know, and and you repent and love, love for Him. So all, that's what's all about. It is about it's about God, man. That's not about what I do. That's all about what God does. So um, I'm just here to tell y'all the truth, the truth about the Bible, what it really means, and um, hopefully people will wake up, and um, God will save them, and they will repent their sins and come to Jesus for salvation. So um, anyway, that's uh, of course that's uh, chapter 19 about Job replies, "My Redeemer lives." Is of course Jesus Christ, the one true God, because He defeated Satan, sin, hell, and death through the resurrection. And Buddha, and let's see Muhammad, Confucius, um, you know wh whoever else there is, they're all dead. They're still dead. They're dead or the they're dead or the doornail. I mean, they're they're dead. All the person that that defeated Satan, sin, hell, and death was Jesus Christ, the one true God who's now in heaven. He's pouring out his spirit upon those he's predestined to save, and now we're just waiting for him to return. So there you go. Chapter 19 and about chapter 20 here very shortly.